morning Pittsburgh Sports Report here on Trib Live Radio, along with Guy Junker. I'm Ken Laird. New season. That's the good news for the Pittsburgh Steelers guy. The bad news is it happens to be the off season. <laughs> a lot of uh, things to get into here over the coming weeks as to where this franchise goes, Guy. But I think the first uh, order of business is figuring out which of these veterans are going to be returning to the squad. And Heinz Ward uh, said on his Facebook page that uh, stories of his departure and retirement are premature. Aaron Smith said last week he'd like to stick around and, and perhaps give it another go. He's going to think about it for a little while. It seems to me there are some veteran players who even some fans think might be ready to head off into the sunset who are not quite ready to go yet. How do you see this playing out as we go forward here in the next couple of months? Well, if Aaron Smith and, and Heinz Ward want to stay, they're going to have to play for a very small uh, salary. Uh, th- that's the first issue here. You're, they're way over the salary cap for next year. Uh, actually, I think the first issue is medical. Uh, even at yesterday's press conference, three guys who got hurt Sunday are being evaluated on whether they're going to need surgery. None of them are young. You've got to wait and see how they you know, a guy like Casey Hampton, <coughs> pardon me, 400 pounds trying to rehab a knee operation if he has to have an operation. I mean, is, is he going to be able to do that? He's probably not going to be able to put the kind of work in that a, that a different type of player, a different type of body structure is uh, is going to be able to do. So medically, you got to see who's healthy. I think these veterans that want to hang on, you got to evaluate whether they can still contribute somewhat, but it's going to have to be at a lesser cost. you got to start investing your money in the future. This is the non-fun part of, of running a football team. you got to take emotions aside, past uh, wars one aside, and start looking ahead and, and who can help you win in the future. Yeah, and for guys like Farrier and even Max Starks, uh, well, Farrier's under contract, Starks will not be, but it, this will not be a quick process. I imagine you'll go through the draft, they'll see who they who falls to them, who they take, what free agents are available, and then they'll come back and sort of evaluate, and it might not be till June where we figure out what the franchise need is for some of these players. But it's hard to imagine Heinz Ward in another jersey and another team. And I, I think for his perspective, he's, I was impressed with how he took on his role as more of a father figure, teacher. He knew the young receivers had been passing him late in the season. I think he's still got a place on this team. As a fifth guy, I think he would take a pay cut to come back for another year. Yeah, I think I think he could still contribute, and I think you're right. I think he did handle it pretty well. Jericho Cotri is maybe a yep. key cog in there. If he leaves, Hines then becomes more valuable, I think. Uh, the, the, the questions are difficult. A guy like James Farrier, to me, who's 37, but doesn't play like he's 30. Is he as good as he was when he was 30? No, but he's still yep. pretty darn effective for his age. And one of these years, guys like that fall off the edge of the cliff, and you hate to invest money or a, a roster position in a guy that all of a sudden gets out there and is a step too slow to be able to play. Uh, you know, I thought Brett Kiesel, considering his age, was the key up front this year and a guy that could start again next year. But, you know, how bad is his groin situation? Is he going to need some kind of surgery as well so uh, it's way too early I think everybody wants to start passing judgment and point fingers and there's got to be definitive answers and this is a process that's going to play out you know all, all the way up until they play their first game until they make their final roster cuts next summer as you look back on the year that was guy they were 12 and 4 they lost to Tim Tebow in a pretty severe upset in the wild card game at least per the Vegas spread how do you put the season in terms of a descriptive word or two I mean people have said transition uh, window closing is sort of a catchphrase that is, uh, if you're a negative guy and you look at it, but it was still a pretty good year. They had a big win over New England. It just it uh, it ends with a very sour taste in everybody's mouths. I don't view it as window closing. Uh, not when you've got a uh, quarterback who to me is the franchise player and he's not even 30 yet. Uh, you've got your receivers are you're very deep at receiver. You're young there. And I'll see what happens to uh, Richard Mendenhall, but running back's not an issue. Heath Miller's getting up there, but I think offensively you're good. The defense is getting a little bit old. I think there's some work to be done there. they got to get younger. Cam Hayward looks like he's going to be a player. So, uh, And at linebacker, they're in pretty good shape. You might, they might start need to retool that secondary some, though none of those guys uh, are what you could call young anymore. So I, I'm not so sure that the window is closing right now. I think as long as you've got a quarterback the caliber of Roethlisberger, the key is you got to get him through a season and keep him healthy. So I don't think the window is closing. As far as this season, though, it's kind of a uh, – Kind of ho hum to me. Twelve and four sounds great, and most organizations would love to have it. Their schedule was weak. You know what? What signature wins did they have? What games did you sit there and say that was a great game? It just kind of to me, yeah. the season to me was kind of a bore. Uh, the New England game was a big win. That was it. 
You know, Baltimore started it off by trouncing them, and uh, there, there were very few games that, to me, were signature games. And uh, to me, it's kind of a kind of a wash. And when you uh, end that by losing and getting upset by a team you were favored to beat by more than a touchdown, yeah, I do not consider it a tremendously successful season. At least we're not in Cleveland. That's always the. Uh bright side to any Pittsburgh sports story, but you're right, uh, the standards here are a bit different. Ken and Guy, weekdays 10 to noon on Trib Live Radio. Check us out at TribLive.com, and we kick things off every morning with the Pittsburgh Sports Report.